go through the instructions as you start and that will make a difference Question number one. Sally, a marketing executive, works from Monday to Friday from 7 to 15 hours at Zoo, Johannesburg Zoo, where she promotes the Johannesburg Zoo. A salary advance for the month of July 2024 is displayed before. A salary advance, we can take it to be a slip also. All right, it has all the details that are needed. It's the first slip that we're looking at, and let's answer the questions. Define the term gross income. And the moment we hear gross income, we shall look, or we shall be looking at the gross, we shall be looking at gross, gross income, we look at uh, you see, total amount, Sally receives before, before deductions. Before deductions. That's the main thing. Before deductions becomes gross. Write down the gross amount in words. Now, gross income is this, and they want us to write this in words. So this will become 26,000. Six thousand one hundred one hundred provided provided the month in which the salary was issued. The date was right here, but we only needed the month, which is this. They so ask the math here. We shall say July. Determine the missing uh, values of A and B. Let's go to the next chair. A is the total deduction. So simply meaning we are going to add all these values. And we ended up having the value of A as A. When you add all those values, A was supposed to be, became 4,776 rands, 78 cents. Then the value of B, the value of B we look at as the net salary. And remember, net salary is after deductions. So we shall say gross minus deductions, which was 26,100 minus the 4,776 rands, 78 cents. So when we did that, uh, the answer became the value of B becomes the value of B becomes uh, 1,823, 22 cents. Okay, we look at this. It means that age in years and months on the day, on the date she receives his payment. On the day she receives her payment, so we shall say. Remember the dates when she received her payment? It was the 31st of July. 31st of July. But the person was born uh, in 1992. 
June in the third year. So what we're going to do down here, we shall say we shall come and say and we, we say the current date, which is 2000. So 201992 subtract 2002. You have approximately 32 years. We have 32 years. 32 years. They are in the, you should go to 32 years in the June, the 30th. So now, currently, it's July 31st. July 31st. That means she's 32 years and one month old. One month and one day. Write pay as you earn in full. I would advise you to write it in, in full as this. Pay as you earn. E P A as Y U E and all right. We look at question number one point two, one point two point one. Sal is planning to visit her family in Sweden during December to experience a white Christmas. She decides she decided to save up up her travel and meal allowances for one year to ensure that she will have enough money for meals, transportation, and entertainment. The current exchange rate is one, 182 cents for only one Koran or of, of, of Sweden. So here we go. Which countries, okay, between the two countries, which country is stronger? So definitely it's what? The Swedish. Swedish corona. All right. Then convert, convert 28,573 28, rands into Swedish corona. But they have told you if you only have one rand of corona, you have, sorry, if, if you only have one, one, let's do it this way. Okay, you see, one corona, you have 1,82. These are runs. So here you have runs. What will they be? For smart plan, that means you're supposed to divide this. You're supposed to divide. Divide this number by 1,82 and your answer became 15,000. 15, Five corona Swedish corona 1.3. The table below contains a list of explanations and definitions of concepts used in mathematical literacy. Match the words given with appropriate description from the table. Write only the correct letter A next to the question number. So the uh, so what you do first in your answer sheet, we want to see this. You write them down. You write the numbers first. So what in this you come to these definitions, you're looking for the one that will match median. The data will say a set of data. This one does no meaning. A company that collects taxes on behalf of the government. In South Africa, it's called sounds. Uh, sum of all numbers divided by the number of values. This could be mean. This could be mean. 
then the number that appears most, this is mod, the number that appears most, we call it mod. Then the table that, the table that is used for tax calculations, we call it the tax table. The set of numbers that contains all numbers only. Yeah, this one is called the discrete. Discrete data. Then the number that is in the middle, this is what? Median. Median. So here we go. So median, we've already seen it. This here, the answer here is supposed to be G. Sales supposed to be B. Uh, mod, the number that appears most is supposed to be D. And then discrete data is supposed to be F. This is how you're supposed to answer it. You got question number 1.4. Below is a graph that represents the level of performance of learners from Jablani Secondary School. For the last test the, that was done at the beginning of August 2024, the performance is represented by levels one to seven. Identify the type of graph that we see here. Uh, this is a bar graph because it has spaces and it's made of bars, all right? So this is, someone would have said it's called a, a vertical bar graph, which is okay. As long as you know it's a vertical, it's not a histogram, it's not a compound bar graph, but it's a bar graph, vertical bar graph. Determine the level where no learners achieve any. So we saw it there, it's level seven. Level seven, we have zero learners. Okay, continue. Question number two. Mr. and Mrs. Delay Clyde plan to renew their wedding balls at Enyani wedding venue. They are com comparing the costs of weekday and a weekend package. They plan to invest, uh, to, to invite. 40, people, uh, 40 couples, 12 people, sorry, 12 singles. These singles include Mr. Dickley and mother and father who are retired and over 65 years of age. Four, four, <clears throat> four children, six, six children who are above five, or who are below, or who are under five. The table below indicates the prices for any wedding venue on Monday to Thursday and on Saturday and Sunday. All right, these are the conditions that you are supposed to go through and you find that we shall use them later. All right, calculate the price per person excluding VET for a Saturday. So we shall come here. Price per person excluding. Price per person excluding, but on Saturday, it's this. So when we are excluding that, we shall take that number. We divide it by 1, 1, 5. And the answer became. The answer became 375 rands. 65 cents the money without vet that was that, that's what we are supposed to do then mr and mrs dinner decided to to have their wedding on thursday instead of saturday instead of saturday instead of saturday to save money Determining the amount the family would have saved on the total cost of the reception, including pet. Now, here we have to deal with 
Now, as and foremost, you have to find out the number of people that you're going to deal with. All right, number of people. Uh, first and foremost, you're looking at first number, 2.1.2 part A, the money they saved. So we shall see. We're going to look at this. One forty two couples. That simply means this is the four times, sorry, forty two times two, which is eighty four, plus twelve single people. But of these single people, they have already divided them. They have already put them into because when you look here, we have four children. We have two, the mother and the father. Those are two already. So we also have the six. These 12 people, they are divided or they are into three groups. So we shall find out how many people are we going to invite so far. So far, uh, single people like the price per person will affect uh, 42 times 2, which is uh, 80, 84. Why am I multiplying by 2? Because I'm looking at couples plus the six children, these ones who are above five years. Why am I including them there? Because the children who are above, look at this, children who are children above five years pay full price. So they will also join the couple on the other side. So how many are they? They are six. So all in all, you have 90 people that you're looking at. That's that's number one. So what about the, the, the pensioners? Two pension people, two pension people with a discount. So, uh, so we shall say the ninety. <clears throat> let me work on Thursday first. How much will they pay on Thursday? So we shall say the ninety. They will pay a full amount here. Thursday. We are looking at this. They will pay 515. That's the money they will pay. Then the people who are pension, the, the pension people, they are two. Each pays that much times. Remember they said there's a condition here that says those ones who are in pension, they will only pay 60% of the price per person. So what do we do? We multiply here by 60%. You also get the value there. Then the four children who are under the age of five years. So for them, they will multiply this times 25 what? Percent. Why do it times 25%? Because they are saying they will pay 25% of the price. So here, that's what we are going to do. The moment you analyze this, you're good to go add up the answers this is thursday so this will become 90 90 times 515 you have the answer as 40 46350 then if you look at the uh, pension people we have 618 and when you look at the babies or the children under the age of five, we have 515. Add up this thing here. So it's 46,350 plus 618 plus. So this answer here becomes 47, 4, 8, 3. This is money spent on Thursday. Then we are going to deal with Saturday. Saturday, we are going to do the same. However, the price, the only thing that's going to change is the price. So we said it's 90. Now I'm, I'm dealing with Saturday. 90 times 432. 432, 90. 
times 432, you get your answers 38,880. This is for the single people who are going to pay in full. Then we go to the next one. Four times times sixty percent. So this will become four two times so here we have five hundred and eighteen. 40 cents. Then the four children. Four children. Four times four, three, two times 25. The answer becomes. So let's add it up also. We need to find out how much was spent on Saturday. So today we are going to add the 38,880 plus 500 plus. So here we have the answer as 39,830 40 cents. Plus the hiring of the venue. Remember on Saturday, if you if you to use on Saturday, you need to hire the venue, which is fifteen thousand six hundred. So we add on the hiring of the venue. When you add on the hiring of the venue, you end up having fifty four thousand. 480 40 cents. So we are going to see how much they save. Uh, Saturday is 55,000. Uh, Thursday we got 47,000. So we need to subtract the two to find that. So we shall subtract 487,483. We are subtracting, we are not dividing, we are subtracting, subtract those values. So they saved. They saved 7,997 runs. 40 cents. This is what they saved. This is what they saved. This was question part 2.1.2. All you had to do, analyze what's going on. What was the important part? It's to find out how many people are you dealing with. Actually, there were 92 people. If you include the couple, Mr. and Mrs. So there are 92 people. She added that for two people, but there's no difference there. supposed to add on the money for two people the bride and the groom which is the one from the one from saturday sorry the one from thursday
92 times 515. We have the answer here as we have the answer here as forty seven thousand three hundred and eighty. Fifty seven thousand three hundred and eighty plus six one eight plus five five. This was supposed to be four eight five one three three. You do the same here. We are only adding two mm, ninety two times four three two, which becomes this much. Thirty-nine thousand seven hundred forty-four, and when you add up everything, you end up having when you add up everything. What we see when you add up everything. Okay, the 40 cent is still there. Add on the compulsory money that you're supposed to pay for the venue, which is 15,650. So you have the answers 50, 40 cents. So you subtract. Subtract and we see we subtract the forty eight forty eight forty eight minus forty eight thousand five hundred thirteen. Yeah, they saved. Seven thousand seven thousand eight hundred seven hundred forty cents. So this is part A in the max. Part B hence calculate the refund. That Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Dickler would have received if they cancelled their wedding, if they cancelled their wedding more than more than a month in advance. But remember, their wedding is what on Thursday. So the amount you're using here is supposed to be the one for Thursday. All right. So we, should, we on Thursday we've already seen that they will have spent. So how much do they get in that? Uh, one eh? more than one a month. Eh? Oh, more than a month in advance. It's here. More than a month in advance, you get seventy-eight percent of the of the venue higher cost. But as they, they will not have venue higher cost, and ninety percent. 
price paid per person. So here we shall use the 90% because these people don't have. Then you hire it. Return the percentage rounded off to the nearest 10, the family would have saved if they're having a win on Thursday. So the savings, we've already seen them at 7,831. The percent divided by money they would have used on Saturday, which was 56,000. So it's uh, 10, comma, comma, 8, which becomes what is more likely to be 10% to the nearest tens. Provide the reason why the venue is more cost effective during the week than weekends. Why is it cheap, cost effective? This simply means it's what? Why is it cheaper? Because they are less, less activities or less events, less events, 2.2, any -2. wedding venue is situated in Rugersdorf, which falls under the Mohare City Municipality. Mohare City Municipality has two tariff systems mm -hmm. or structures that they use to calculate the cost of water consumption. The table, th table three below, the two tariffs are given. One is normal rate when there is, when there is sufficient supply of water, and the other is an increased rate during times where there, there is water shortage. Enyani, wedding venue, consumes an average of 971 kiloliters of water per month. The manager at Enyan Wedding Venue states that they pay more than 150 when they are, when the water shortage. So we're looking at 2.2.1. So we want to prove whether the manager states, sorry, we want to prove whether his statement is right. Because they state that they pay more than 150,000 when there are water shortages. Okay, the first thing you're going to do for me is that you'll have to find out 971 kiloliters. Indeed, these ones, they have exceeded what? They have exceeded the, the normal brackets. So we have to find out in the first bracket, how many did they consume? They consumed 60. In the second bracket, the second bracket here, how many did they consume? So we shall take 150 minus 60. 
So they consume the 90. The other one, 300 minus 150, you get 150. 450 minus 300, you get 150. And this one is open. But because they have exceeded 450, so to get the number which is here, you shall say 971 minus 451. Sorry, minus 450. 971 minus 450. What are we looking for? We are looking for the maximum or we're looking for the we are looking for the we are looking for the number of kiloliters that they have used and each bracket. Remember each bracket takes its own amount. So take note when you look at this. We are looking at, we are using water water shortage. So we, are, we shall be this other side of the road, this other side of the table. This is water shortage rate. This is what we're going to use to find out whether it's true or not. Okay. So if they use 60, how much do they pay? So we shall take this 60, we we'll multiply it with that. Then 90, we we'll multiply. Why are we multiplying? Because this is, around per kiloliter. So here we shall get 150 times that, 150 times that, and here we have, so what answer do we have? So 60 times, 60 times 29,93. So in the first bracket they have 1,795. 80 cents. Then here we have 90 times 52, Then here we have 150 times 89. Then we have 150 times 114, 40%. And lastly, we have 521 meters, 1795. Plus we are adding these values up, uh, which is okay. We are adding up now these values here one by one. We see already the values include eight, so we are going on and we are adding. 17,000, sorry, 1,795, uh, 1, 80 cents, plus 4,719 rands, 80 cents. We have 13,350 plus 17,166 17, plus 93,503 rands. 87 cents. So we end up having 130,535 rands, 27 cents. So the claim is invalid. The claim is invalid. This is what you would have done. 
Okay, why is a sliding scale used when the cost, when the cost related to water usage is calculated to avoid wastage of water? How do we do that? Because the more you use, the more you pay. So if we if the sliding sliding as in uh, they are showing you the how is it sliding? Uh, let's say there's a scale that looks like this. So if it's sliding, that means there's a certain value that goes on like that. Because you see very well, as you start, it's small. As you go on, it keeps increasing. It's sliding. It's sliding. Why do you use a sliding scale? Avoid wastage of water. The more you pay, sorry, the more you use, the more you pay. Okay, we continue and we look at the next question. Determine the probability as a decimal fraction that there is a rate, that there is a rate lower than 30 runs per kiloliter during the normal. So you come here, we look for how many, how many rates are they by the way we count? One, two, three, four, five. Of the five rates, which how many are below 30? We have one, two. So it's two out of five, which is the same as 0, 0,4. Why do we put it at 0, 0,4? They want a decimal fraction. They want a decimal fraction. All right, we look at question number three. This will call on onto their next year, next year A. Let's look at the next year A. This is how it looks like. Identify the province, identify the province with the largest population. Definitely we shall come here and see population of South Africa. Nine provinces, the largest is this one here. This is the largest, and it's what? Houteng. This is the Houteng province, or GP. Show the total. This is so simple. Add all these values. Add them up. Add all these values, and the answer will be there. Yeah, you're supposed to add all the given values. Don't try to add all the given values, but you do it, you get the answer here. Yeah. Add all the given values, as I have just shown you there next year. Show how the population percentage of Kumalanga was calculated. Now, how is it? Well, how was it? So we are going to take Kumalanga population divided by the total population times 100. So we shall come here. Kumalanga, Kumalanga has 4,442,500. Okay, let's look at divided by the fifty six million five hundred twenty two thousand you multiply by hundred so we have the answer as seven comma Eight six, but they rounded off one decimal place. It becomes seven comma nine cent. This is what they wanted you to do, as you see it here. Malanga, look at this. So they're asking you, how did they get this? That's how they got it. Show the working the percentage. No, looked at the percentages. I said that there are two provinces with. 
the same percentage of a different number of people for the province in terms of their population. Identify the two provinces and determine the population difference. You look at difference, that means you're going to subtract and explain why the percentages can be the same, but the population number are different. Now, let's identify. When you look at their next year, two provinces with the same percentage, we have Western Cape, followed by Eastern Cape. Why do they have the same percentage, yet the numbers are not the same? Yet the numbers are not the same. So here we say, the provinces we said it's what? Western Cape and Eastern Cape. But the reason for their number are not the same, but they have the same percentages. Uh, this is because this is because of overrounding group. This is because there is over rounding off. And the population difference, by the way. They said population difference, you would come here, look at this, this one here, minus this. We're looking at population difference. 6,508,700 minus 6,508,700 minus 6 million we have 6 million 500 and six million five hundred and eight thousand seven hundred minus Six million four hundred ninety seven thousand one hundred. So the difference between these two is what we are looking at, and you got the answer as. You put the answer as what? Eleven thousand six hundred. I'm looking at the difference. Is the is is this is this an example of discrete or continuous data? Discrete or continuous data? We shall say it's what? discrete why we are dealing with all numbers we are dealing with all numbers now determine the number of let's sorry determine the median for class a what you're going to do first and foremost and first analyze how many numbers are there because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here we have one, two, three. Wow, there are thirty numbers all together. So if I'm to look, I'm looking. If I'm to look for the median, I would need to get the total number of those, and I divide it by two because I'm looking for the middle number, which gives me fifteen. So since it gives me a definite number, that means I'm going to add the two numbers I find. So then you add the number that makes 15 and the number that makes what? 16. I'll divide the two. These are positions, the 15th number and the 16th number. These are just positions. So I need to count and find out. Because when, I look, uh, because when I'm looking for a median, I need to arrange. 
I need to arrange my data. So here I was supposed to say uh, my number one is My number one was oh user different I'm going to number them. My number one is twenty two. Twenty two, then I have twenty six. Number three is a twenty eight. Number four is a thirty. Number five. Number five is a 32. Number six is a 33. Number seven Number seven thirty four eight nine ten. So we have four thirty four. So you all take those numbers ten. So number eleven is thirty five. Number twelve. Number twelve is twelve. Then then uh, we have 13, 13 as 36, sorry, 38, 14 is 42, 15, 15 is 43, and 16 is 45. I don't need to complete all the table because I've found out that I have, I needed number 15 and 16. So in 16, in 15th position, I have 43. Plus in the 16th position, I have 45. I added the two, I divided by. When I added the two, 43, 45, I get 88. I divide by two, so the answer becomes 44. My median is 44. All right. We'll continue with the question paper. And you are saying, we are saying, so this was the answer. This was the answer for question number, the median. This was the median. Okay. The value of A, uh, the value of A we are going to, the value of A we shall have to, The value of A we shall have to, to add all the normal numbers first. We shall have to add all the normal numbers. So the answer became 25,9, which is approximately 26. This is why I'm rounding up because the numbers here are ca uh, countable numbers.
the answer became 26. That's A. Bruce Lee stated that the range height for this set of data is more than double the height of the short, shortest line. Show by means of calculation whether his statement is correct. So first and foremost, what are we proving? We have two things we need to know. One is the, the St. Lucie states that the range, the range height is more than double the height of the shortest line. So first and foremost, we need to find the range, which, which, which will be highest value minus lowest value. And the highest value here is 2,04 minus the lowest, which is 0. Want to find out is it double the shortest? So we divide by it's one comma one nine, and the claim is what it's incorrect. But you wanted to hear it if, if, if it was more. More than that was in if it was two and above. Okay, that marks the end of question number three. Look at question number four. Mr. Shabalala is a 32 year old man that works for Box Fashion. Box Fashion. He oversees the packaging of the boxes that must be distributed to customers. He receives a monthly gross. Income of thirty-two thousand five hundred forty two rands eighty cents. He contributes seven comma five percent towards his pension fund. Mr. Shabalala is married and has four children. He contributes towards a medical aid for himself and his family. All right, they're telling us who's the next year B. Refer to an extra B, annual income tax deductions for individuals and special trusts. Use the information above and an extra B to answer the following questions. All right, now use the information above and an extra B. We're looking at 4.1.1. Calculate Mr. Shabalaza's annual taxable income five months taxable income taxable income will equal to taxable income equals to gross minus pension but remember they said annual so we shall need to multiply this by 12. why do you multiply by 12? It gets a monthly, it's monthly gross. So the first thing you would have done there, you would have said, we shall say, mm -hmm. 32,000. 540 two rand eighty cents minus seven comma five over a hundred times thirty two thousand five hundred forty two rand eighty cents. Put this in brackets and multiply by twelve. So let's do that and we find out the answer that we get.
to hear the answer becomes 30, sorry, 306 to 1, 222.8 cents. This is how we are supposed to do it. Okay. Someone else, someone else, uh, someone else would have done this. Would have looked for pension alone. Would have looked for pension alone. It's this man much. Then you subtract this. And wait, wait, go. still get the same answer. Okay. Calculate Mr. Chabalala's medical tax credits for 2024. Now, when it comes to medical tax credits, we are going to use the number of people that we know here in the family. How many are they? We have, remember, they say he's married. So, husband and wife and the four children. So, all in all, they are six people. So when you look at their next year, which is medical aid, let's check on the medical aid here. We are saying there are six people, husband and wife, and the four children. These are six. So we say the first two people will share the same amount from here. Medical aid, so 728. So the other people who are remaining, we consider them to be for each of additional dependent has to pay this much. So here we have four additional dependent. Mm -hmm. Do that and see. 728, here you have 1,456 plus 200, that's my times two, 984. We have 444, but they said for the year, so you multiply by two. And the final answer is this is how we do it. This is the medical tax credits. We are saying we are supposed to be two times. Seven hundred and plus now the four who are multiplying with the two hundred and what? Everything multiplied by twelve. Everything. 
16 multiplied by 12 and the answer became 29,480. All right, here we go. 4.1.3 is what we are looking at. They are asking us Shabala's monthly tax contribution. This is when we use the tax what? Tables. After seeing it, after using the taxable income that we got. So we have to keep the taxable income that we put in 4.1.1. We have to keep it and we take it there aside. Then we're going to do the calculation using the table. All right. Allow me to do the calculations here because the other side I never had enough space. But as long as you know we are doing question number 4.1.3, which is about tax paid per month. So, the taxable income, we go that side. We need to remember it here. We got a taxable income, which was 361,425.8 cents. So, if you're going to look at, you check in, yeah, it's this one here that we are looking for. Okay, let's come back here. So we ask ourselves, which bracket does it belong to? That's the first question. Which bracket? And we come, this is 361. Yes, it belongs to bracket number two. It's less than, so we shall write down and say bracket number two. We write it down, bracket number two. Bracket number two states that you have to take the 42,000 678 plus 26,000 plus 26%. Into brackets, we shall put our taxable income that we came with from the other side, which was. Three hundred sixty-one thousand two hundred fifty two hundred twenty-five rands eighty cents minus the value that was found in bucket number two, which is two hundred two hundred thirty-seven thousand one hundred. This is important. We are looking at this number. This is what is going to do the. This is what we're going to use to do calculations from here, like that. That's what I was writing that said. Okay. So here we go. Let's put that number in. So it's 42,000 plus. 0.26 times. What number do you get in the brackets here? In the brackets we have so we do everything, put in the calculator.
in the pavy. Ninety four thousand nine hundred fifty, and we have. 52. 52 runs. Now, this is when we subtract the rebate and we subtract the medical tax what? credit. Now, Mr. Shabarala is 32 years of age. So he only qualifies for the primary rebate. And we shall also subtract the medical aid, which is 29,000. We shall subtract the medical aid which is 29,280. Okay, let's come here, say. Since it's in a primary, we shall subtract 17,232. Subtract it from here, as you repeat. And minus the medical aid that we had already got. We end up having twenty eight. We need math. We divide by two. And the answer there is supposed to be this was question number. That's a man. This was the question we are dealing with. Tax, monthly tax contribution. All right, 4.1.4. Mr. Shabalala's mother is 65 years old and earns a taxable income of 10,321 rands a month. Mr. Shabalala claims that his mother is earning below the tax threshold. For 2024, thus, thus she is not supposed to contribute towards pension, sorry, personal income tax. How do we prove that? They are saying verify showing all calculations whether his statement is valid. So, first and foremost, you need to look for the month uh, for the annual taxable income, which will be this much. You multiply by oh, multiply by. Multiply by 12. So 10,321 times 12. You have to see that you have 123,852. So, what is the threshold for someone who is 65 years of age? Shall go to the table and see. The threshold for someone who is 65 years of age, it's this one here, 114. So this versus 114, sorry, 148,000. Two hundred seventeen. The statement is valid. The statement is valid. Why is it valid? The money is below the threshold, and once you're below the threshold or equal to the threshold, you don't pay any money. You don't pay any tax. Show by. Okay, show how the fixed amount of this money in bracket number five was calculated. 
go to the table, bracket number five. If you don't know where bracket number one five, five is, you can count, you can say one, two, three, four, five. So we are looking for this question here. The question wants you to tell how was the 179,147, how was this value determined? So I've already said these values, they come from the previous bracket. So we show how it was determined, we shall say, we shall say, one two one four seven five plus zero comma six into brackets. You put the maximum, which is this thing. So we put this value, which is the way this one here. Six seven eighty thousand minus minus this one, which is the This number, that's how we prove it. It comes from the previous bracket. It comes from the previous bracket. Okay, 4.2. Let's have a little did some research on the weight of the workers at the box fashion. fashion. His results are represented in a box and whiskers plot in the next just study the diagram in the next just see and answer the questions that follow. Let's look at the next just see. I doubt the median weight of female workers. Remember, this is the minimum. It's our Q1, Q2, Q3, and the maximum. The, the Q2 is the one representing the median. So these are male, these are female. So what is the median for female? It's what? Fifty-five. So we come here and we see. Explain the meaning of the value fifty in the box and discuss plot for the female. Uh, it means that 25% of the weight are below. Are below 
Entendi. But this is our Q1. But this side, it's 25. And this side, 75. Uh, Mr. Shambhala has stated that the intercourtier range of the male worker is double that of female workers. Determine the difference between the intercourtier range of male workers and female workers. Determine the difference between. So we are going to subtract so far. Intercourtier range of female. Remember, intercourtier range equals to 1 minus K3. We shall come here. Female, what is our Q150? This is this Q1 and the uh, approximately this. This will be our Q3. So it's sixty nine minus. This is nineteen. Let's look at that one of the male. Still Q3 minus Q1, which will be male. Male Q1 is 62. Then 68. So we shall say 68 minus. So eighty six minus sixty two, and the answer is what twenty four. And the difference now will be we have five here. Yeah. As I said, determine the difference between the intercourtier range. So it's fourteen. So we look at 4.3. Mr. Shabalala bought his wife a new car. An out kicker. This car is financed by Standard Bank as he could not afford to buy the car for cash. Standard Bank allowed him to pay for the, for the vehicle on a higher purchase agreement with a deposit of 15.8%. The cash pressure of the car is 319,999 runs. Okay, use an extra D, answer the question. Calculate the deposit, we just see it up there. So we are supposed to take 15 over 100 times. We're supposed to do that.
Eu dei depois de duas. Fifty thousand five hundred fifty nine runs eighty four cents. All right. Okay, the instrument for mark A for the vehicle. Instrument for mark A for the vehicle. This could have been the outstanding balance. Divided by 60. Because there are 60 months from your next year. Then. I'm taking the principal debit. The number of the match, remember. Installments. This is math. Math is so we need to know that. So two six nine four three five nine comma five divided by six. So we end up having the answers four thousand four hundred ninety. We shall say Service fee for the salary bank is VAT inclusive in 2018. The service fee was the same amount in the statement. Kaka the VAT exclusive amount. Now let's do service fee. We already seen it. Service fee 69. If you have to exclude it in 2018, we shall divide by 1,14. becomes We find the closing balance. It's supposed to be minus.
All right, we look at question number five. We are looking at Mr. Pillay's daughter plans to get married into two years, and he decided to invest the money into an Ellen Gray account so that he can save towards the wedding. He decides to invest 13000 into this account. Ellen Gray offered him 17.59 per cent per annum compounded half yearly. So, half yearly, the period, the period, um, a period of two and a half years. So, if you were to do the full, it would be five, five steps. Five. Steps, which is how do you get the five steps? Remember, it's compounded half yearly. So in one year we have two months, two two halves. So in two, in four years we have. Oh, sorry, in two years we have four halves plus one half. That's what makes it five halves. So five steps. Five steps. Five steps. Calculate the total amount that Mr. PD will have in his account after two years. Six months. First and foremost. We shall get the interest divided by two because this interest compounded per annum, but we want to change it into two, and we shall say seventeen percent divided by two. We end up having we end up having. Seven nine percent, then the period will be two and a half years, two and a half years, which is two comma five times two shall have five steps or five, five installments. All right, we continue and we say so now you have analyzed. <coughs> Analyze and remember this is compound. Compound. What we're going to do? Add. Add a hundred here, and you divide by hundred. I want to make it simple. So plus a hundred, then divided by hundred. So I end up having one comma. Zero eight seven nine five, which is approximately one comma zero nine, but you may leave it as a full one. <coughs> so, meaning for the first half, first half, we had to do this. First half, then the second half will be this number that we have used. And now the last amount there.
Remember, uh, we're going to do for two years, so there are going to be four steps. So, the third step, still we are using this. The last one. Bring the same. We don't want to go to this. More five six. And the final answer becomes. This is what we will have in two years. They're asking, can you get the total armor that is that we have in his account in two years? Yeah, he will have 18,212 francs, 90 cents. All right, then now we look at uh, 5.1.2. Mr. Perry's daughter asked her father to only pay for the wedding with the interest accumulated on the investment and keep the capital, keep the capital amount invested. Calculate the amount that Mr. Perry paid towards the wedding to max. Now, all you have to do, because we are looking at, uh, she asked the interest accumulated on the investment and the keep the capital. So the investment is going to be for two and a half years. So far, in question number 5.1.1, we've done two years. Let's do one more half. And we shall say the half will come as they have will still be times That's nineteen thousand eight hundred. So if if this person is two, take out the interest. So meaning we're going to subtract the money that they invested, which was the capital. So minus thirteen thousand. That's what they started with. So this is the money they. Is the money that you invested in the wedding as interest. This is question number 5.1.2.
5.2. This subpoena investigates the production of gold across the globe to determine the best option to invest his money. He found the following information, even in the next year F. Study the gold production information in the next year F and answer the questions that follow. Show how the total production rounded to, I'm sorry, round, rounded off to 3,200 tons was calculated. This one we shall see. All they did was to you add all these values. You add all these values that you see here. You add them up and they will add up to they will add up to three thousand two hundred and forty, which is approximately. So the question says show how. So all you do, add up the, the values. Determine the percentage that Mexico contributed to the globe, the global uh, gold contribution, gold production, round off to the nearest percentage. We shall go and get the Mexico value. Mexico. Mexico contributed 100 tons. So we shall say 100 tons over 3,200 tons times 100. So the percentage here becomes three comma one. To five, which is approximately, because I said to the nearest percentage, which is the percent. Identify the gold production for Australia and South Africa. Identify the gold production of Australia and South Africa. And why do you think the gold production in Australia is so much higher than? South Africa. Australia, we come here, look for Australia. It's this, 320. And South Africa is 90. South Africa mines are running out of gold since they've been mining them for long and Australia just started mining. This could be the reason why we have a difference in production. Another, another, another what? Uh, the closure of some of the mines in South Africa the closure of some, some of the mines in South Africa could have caused this difference. Since they are closed, that there's no more production. Yeah, uh, strikes in the uh, labor works. You know, that one can also cause that production. All right, we look at question number 5.3. Jackson, Jackson conducted a study on the resting heart rates across the age groups from 10 years, from 10 year olds up to 60 year olds. He represented the data in the data 
in the graph that is shown in Annexture G. Study the Annexture G and other the following questions. Which age group has the highest mean fat rate? We come here and see. When you look at it, the highest, it could be this. This is a little bit low. So these are the 40s. Determine the probability of one of the participants being 65 years old. The probability there is what? One. Sure, because we have the 60s here. 61, 62, up to 69. So definitely we have a, a, a there's a chance that the person could have been there. Explain the trend. When we look at trend, you're going to tell us the change that you see as the graphs go up. All right. The resting rate. So all you say here uh, mm -hmm. from the 10th to the 30th, there is. There is an there is an increase and there is a draw or a decrease from the fifties to the sixties. That's what you wanted you to see. 